And we are live. You guys should be able to see me. Make sure everything's working here. I do see a uh, good old Too Tall Toby in the chat today. Welcome, everybody, to another Workflow Wednesday. I am your host, Fusion Phil, over here at JitCAD Cam. This week, we're going to be covering the tool libraries as well as the machine libraries. I want to make sure you guys can hear me all right. I know there is a little bit of a delay. If you guys can't hear me or I'm screwing something up, feel free to let me know in chat. I'll keep my eyes open. But let's go ahead and dive inside of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to display my screen because I've made that mistake one too many times. But as you guys can see is I've already got a part pulled up here and I've already got some tool paths on it. Now, I'm going to run you through some good scenarios that a lot of us have encountered, regardless of what library you're using inside the actual manufacturer workspace. So the very first thing is I see this all the time with a lot of users not having your cloud library turned on. Now, I can't stress this enough, is it's very easy to go up to your preferences and go over to manufacture and enable your cloud libraries. Now, again, a lot of you are probably beating your head against the wall because I've said this a lot. Go ahead and check all these boxes on top of it. And as you're gonna see with all those boxes checked, I have things like cycle times and a lot more information at my toolpath level. Now, additionally, I'm going to go ahead and let you know that you can turn off get the latest host and machine settings from Autodesk right here under optional features. Now, you get a post, you make changes to that post, then you kind of get upset when it updates and you lose all your changes. Now, we can automatically get those updates or we can toggle that off. I know I get that question quite a bit, right? So, as you guys can see, I've got a very simple couple of tool paths. They're not the best of tool paths. I wanted to set this up for an example here, but I think we're all guilty of this, right? Is we're gonna go run this part. Maybe we've ran the first part and you know what? We don't like these speeds and feeds, right? Now for this tool, I have two options, which I pulled this from the default library. One is default and one is custom. Well, this is an aluminum part. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in 12,000 RPMs and maybe we're gonna run it at 100 inches per minute. Now, get with your tooling manufacturer, make sure that he's giving you the right recommendations on speeds and feeds here. But as you're seeing, when I manually override my feeds and speeds here, it actually creates a custom feed and speed preset. Now, what happens there is that information never actually makes it back to my tool library. Now, in my tool library, I have what's called a shop crib. It's where I save all of my tools that currently aren't in a machine, or in this case, just common tools that I go grab and use from time to time. And as you're seeing at the shop crib level, those feeds and feeds never actually updated in my cloud library. Now, in my setup side of things, again, with that custom speed and feed, it's a one-off scenario. And a lot of people miss the fact that, again, that is not going to update here in my speeds and feeds. Now, keep in mind, I do like to point this out. Autodesk, if you guys are watching, it would be great to be able to link my tools optionally from a cloud library to my parts directly, at least in a fashion of pushing back any information that's added at my setup level or at my part level to always update and maintain my tool. So how do we remedy this? Well. Commonly, what I see people do is they go into this tool path and they say edit tool. And as you're going to see here in this tool, I'm going to go over to cutting data and I'm going to add, you know, maybe 6061. And as we talked about, 12,000 RPMs, 100 inches per minute, so forth and so on, right? So now we've accepted that. We could have got there also going through our menu inside of Fusion, of course, but I'm going to go in here. I'm going to say 6061 now. We went, we ran that part, everything's good. We go to reuse that tool, right? Well, that's where the problem lies. I'm gonna bring back open my tool library, but I'm gonna do this a different way because I should get used to this habit, right? I've been struggling to get a better workflow down. As you can see, I don't have it in my shortcut menu. You guys need to do this at the end of the day. I promise you, you'll never look back at the way you use Fusion once you start using the shortcut menu. But now I can actually hit S on my keyboard and immediately jump to whatever is in my shortcut menu. And if I go to my setup, what you're gonna notice under tool one, I now have my default in my 6061, right? We created that 6061 cycle. So in my shop crib though, again, it never linked or made its way back to my default library, right? Or my cloud library. 
So the next time I want to use this tool, I'm probably not going to have this part open, right? Maybe it's Friday, we close everything out, we shut down our computer, we come in Monday. Those latest feeds and feeds that I've associated with my tool are no longer tracked back to my main library. So again, this is where I think Autodesk, guys, if you guys watch these videos or if anybody out there is agreeing with me, please leave a comment down below. Linking your tools in your libraries would be great, as well as setting up our speeds and feeds based on a material library coming from our part or even coming from the material library on the design side, right? So as you can see, what I would actually have to do in order for this to work properly is I would go all the way back to my shop crib tool, would actually edit this tool here. And this time we're just gonna say, you know, 6061. And I'm gonna put F for face so that we can see the difference between these two. Again, 12,000 RPMs, and we're gonna give it 100 inches per minute, right? So as you can see, when I go to pick my tool, I need to update that tool that's saved all the way back to the cloud if I plan to rinse and repeat you know, future parts using these same speeds and feeds. Now you could take this one step further. I don't wanna make this all about tool speeds and feeds. We could have add step down and step over as you guys can imagine. And now with that, my latest and greatest comes through and I can go run my part, right? Now, another workflow that I have used that works really, really well is I like to actually create a library in the cloud and what that library could be is the machine itself. So now you could do this as a library or as a folder. So if I say new folder, this could be my TL1. You know, maybe you're gonna have a, I say TL1 because it's just been in my head all day. Oh, which day, uh, you said it got a little quieter, huh? Let's see what we got in our settings. We should be all turned up. I might've bumped my mic there for a sec there. Can you still hear me too tall, Toby? In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and add a library under this folder. And now this might be my steel tooling. I wouldn't recommend setting up my library this week. However, you could say this is, you know, end mills. And then you could create another library for turning tools, so forth and so on. Now, how you guys organize this is up to you. I like to create a library when it's underneath my actual machine organization, because then when I'm done with my part, I could actually snag any tools that I have that I'm using on this part and place them in the machine for the next guy or the next part I might do, I could just jump to my machine, right? Again, it would be lovely if this was all linked together. As you guys can see, as you could also take this one step higher, we could actually say, you know, maybe this isn't the TL library, right? We're gonna go ahead and rename this. This is gonna be the shop crib. And then you could set up instead of as I've classified these, we could again, you know, say this is, you know, TL1, this is our VF, you know, two, whatever your machines are, right? Either way, it still comes back to the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead, and as you can see, I have all these tools in here from the millions of times I've programmed this part, and I'm simply just going to remove all unused tools, right? Of course, we're gonna go ahead and grab all of those if we can. Let's see if we can actually do a shift highlight, remove unused tools. We can, great feature, narrows it back down to only the tools used here. And if you're like me and you accidentally hit the escape key, we'll get that pop back open. But I can now highlight those tools, copy, and then paste them directly into my machine library so that I can grab them at any time. Again, now my shop crib is gonna show all tools. I could narrow it down by tools sitting in certain machines or certain pocket numbers. Right now, the reason why I wanted to dive into this so much on the actual tool side is when we take this and we try to mirror this across a few other areas, like for example, our machine library. Again, we could add that to the shortcut menu. I would really, really recommend adding tool library to your shortcut menu. Probably not so much your machine library, but I do see this quite a bit, right? Somebody goes out, they select their machine. In this case, I'm going to grab a random machine that I have inside of Fusion. And now I need to edit that machine for the part I'm running, right? So again, this is something that we help with at JIT CAD CAM. It's why we are an Autodesk reseller and we support users like you, is you may want to go in and park your X axis, for example. In this case, it's set to home center of the table, right? We may need to temporarily put it to a different position or move it out of the way for a tool change, but we only wanna do it on this one instant, right? 
So we edit our actual machine here inside of our actual setup. Now that's not gonna reflect back to my main model that I use. So when you're trial and erroring things at first, what can happen to you or your shop is when you go into your recents folder or your document folder, you'll notice that those machines show up. So let's get an example of that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go out. I'm gonna select that machine. Again, this is the machine I wanna use on this setup. We're gonna go ahead and just leave it where it sits. This is for example purposes only. But now when I go to my machine library, as you're gonna see in the document, that machine is sitting around. Now, if I was to go in and swap out machines, again, I go to, you know, in this case, I'm gonna go pull a Fidal machine. That's gonna come in. And now you're gonna notice at the document level, I have multiple machines sitting inside of this folder. Now, keep in mind, if you're constantly changing the machines or you're building out your machine sim the first time around, you're gonna wanna go in and remove these from your document if you're not using them, right? Now, this is where I like having a local library. If I'm tweaking a pose, I'm tweaking a machine, getting it up to par to actually do production on, so that I can move it over to the cloud. And then once it's on a cloud, it's a fixed point for everybody to use, right? So again, with the organization of these libraries, it's mirrored across both tools, machines, and even your post library, where if you grab something from the cloud and you can actually edit a post in the cloud and it's saved to the cloud, which is super nice. But in any other aspect, it never actually links its way back the same way as post processor, right? So as you can see here, we have notes on being able to change all of these. Again, when you're building out something or you're doing something with your machine and you're pulling a post from Autodesk, I would highly recommend that you do, of course, copy it, paste it over into your local area for working, and then move it from your local area over into your cloud when it's up to par to go run a machine and distribute to your team. Guys, I appreciate all of you for coming out and checking out this live video. That kind of concludes this video for this week. You guys have any questions at all it's remember it's not what you know it's who you know and you know fusion phil over here at jit cad cam i've been feeling a little under the weather however you could probably hear that inside of my voice and don't forget this friday again we're going to be doing our two hours of free support starting at 1 p.m central standard time if you like this content feel free to hit a like comment down below subscribe to our channel and share this info out to anybody and everybody to help promote this channel Lastly, if you want to promote this channel and help us in any way, feel free to buy me a beer with the link down below. I don't know why you guys get a link out of or a kick out of that, but it seemed to be a pretty good thing and it really does help this content get better. Thanks. Have a great rest of your day.